Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax softwares. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point as usual, single filer. We've got Mr. Anderson, no dependents, 100,000 on the W-2 income, 12,950 standard deduction gets us down to the bottom line taxable income, 87,050. We're mirroring that on our formula in Excel, 100,000. We've got, that's the wrong button, 12,950, 87,050. And then the software doing the calculation on page numero two, 14,774. Uh, 15,000 withholding gets us to the bottom line 226. So there is our mirroring of that. Back on over. Now we want to think about the itemized deductions. So note that remember, uh, when you're looking at the itemized deductions, they're intimately related to the standard deduction because we need to clear the standard deduction before we're able to take the itemized deduction. So in practice, if we're talking to clients that are nowhere near being able to clear the standard deduction through brilliant deduction, then we don't really have to worry about the categorizations on the itemized deductions. And we want to keep in mind those categories and what they are anyways, because when they ask us about it, we want to be able to say, yeah, well, that's an itemized deduction and you might not be able to take the itemized deductions because they're not going to be clearing the standard deduction. We also want to keep in mind the major things that usually help people to clear the standard deduction, that being a home purchase. Oftentimes a home purchase in a fairly high cost of living area where a high mortgage was taken out because it's the interest and the property taxes on the home that often are the big items pushing people over from taking the standard deduction to the itemized deductions. You want to be careful also of recommending that people purchase a home simply to be able to itemize because it's more complex than that, as we'll talk about when we get to like the home mortgage interest and uh, the, the, the state taxes. But that's often something that they might hear from like mortgage brokers and stuff. So you want to have maybe a more nuanced perspective of that from uh, the tax side of things because it will most likely come up. Now you can see the standard deductions on the left hand side where they have the 12,950. So you want to keep that number in mind. If they're married, you could double it. So now you have the 25,900. They would have to clear that number before it would be beneficial. And then the 19,400 is in the middle for the head of household. Note that if they're over 65 and or blind, we have another set of rules, which you can see on the form 1040 SR and they're on the last page of it. And that means if they're single, then, then you're going to add one. So now they're up to 14, seven, if they were, uh, over 65 or blind. And then if they're both, it would be 16, four, 450 married, it would be up to uh, 27 three if one of the married people were over <laughs> over 65 and so on you can see these different combinations and uh, in our worksheet we've shown that down here these are our standard deductions they would have to clear and then if they were over uh, if they were over 65 or blind we would add if they were single or head of household this amount and married this amount <laughs> for each of those components so we could work that out and, and see where the hurdle is. And of course the tax software helps us to find that hurdle as well. All right, so let's, let's see the schedule A itself is gonna be right here. And we could see the major components of the schedule A, which are gonna be the medical and dental expenses. Now let's just give a quick overview as we look at these. The medical and dental is probably not gonna be the main thing to push people over to itemizing because there's this seven point five percent which is actually a floor so you have to clear that before the medical expenses start kicking in and then you you still have to get over the, the the standard deduction in order to itemize so if someone had a really big issue like they went to the hospital car accident or something then it's like then they might have severe medical expenses that may in and of itself bring them over into itemizing but most of the time that's not the thing that that 
that's the real big factor that pushes people over. The taxes paid, the major taxes we often think about are the state taxes that are paid, that are the income taxes oftentimes if you're in a state that has income tax or the sales tax. But also the big one here is the property taxes, which could be applicable on a home again, because a, a home that's quite expensive could have quite large property taxes that can boost you over to itemizing, although they are currently capped as well, which we'll talk about more later, which limits some of the benefits from purchasing the home on high uh, cost of living states, oftentimes like California, New York. Interest, the major interest we think about here is the home mortgage interest. That's the big one, especially if you're purchasing homes in a high cost of living state, you could have quite a high mortgage, even for a fairly modest home, and uh, that could push the mortgage interest to be quite high. The gifts to charity, that's one that often comes up. People think about gifts to charities a lot, but if they don't itemize, they're not gonna get the gifts to charity. Then you got the casualty and, and theft, which been, has been limited a lot, the other itemized and the, the total itemized. So let's just add something here to the interest. This is the big one that often pushes people over. And let's say they had home mortgage interest just so we can see the flip from itemized to standard. So if I say they had more mortgage interest of let's say, let's say 14,000, then it's likely that they're also gonna have taxes, property taxes that is related to the home. So if I see home mortgage interest, I got a 10, 98 or something like that which we'll talk about later for home mortgage interest i would think well they must have property taxes if they didn't that would be weird so i'm going to say that they let's say three thousand on property taxes i'm just making these up right now we're going to go back to the forms so that means now we've been populating the property taxes the home mortgage interest that brings us up to eighteen thousand seventeen. if i go to the per first page of the form 1040 that of course is higher, higher, higher than than the standard deduction, and therefore we're taking the 18, 18, 17 at that point. Now, if I mirror that over here on my Schedule A in my worksheet, I could say, okay, Schedule A. Let's go back on over. I'm gonna. I can then put this mortgage interest in from the mortgage interest statement. Fourteen thousand, I think I said it was. And then we have interest for the property taxes, which I think I said 3,000. Now, I'm saying that this is a California return. So that means I'm also gonna have some other kind of taxes, meaning uh, I'm either gonna have state income taxes or I'm gonna have, uh, or I'm gonna have uh, sales tax. So the software is currently calculating this tax right here for the, for the sales tax. So that's something that oftentimes you might be reliant on the, so on the software to help you out to calculate. And every time you make a change, you might have a change to like the tax calculation for the state taxes.